Hey, everybody. So today I kind of wanted to talk about how I prepare bee specimens for, for other uses, like photography or for identification, things like that. So generally, when I collect in the summertime, I bring one of these kind of cardboard boxes with me. I get these from BioQuip. They have styrofoam at the bottom. And at the end of the day, I will pin the bees that I have collected. So this top row of bees is a series of bees that I collected on a project looking at pollinators of milkweed. So I will pin those bees and bring them back to the lab. Then in the winter time, like right now, I will have time to go through and label the bees, like down here at the bottom. So each bee gets its own individual label. Label the bees, uh, enter that data into the computer, and also spend time identifying the bees. Personally, I also like to photograph uh, bees for other uses. For example, Olivia and I just finished making a field guide to common bees of Eastern North America. And in that, we did a lot of photography of, of preserved bee specimens. But as you see, when we, when we pin bees in the field, sometimes they end up looking uh, kind of disheveled on the pin, right? We just take the pin, the bee in the field, and we pin it and we let it dry out. But if you're gonna use that specimen for photography, you kind of need it to look a certain way. So if I just take a picture of this bee as it is, it's really cool to see it close up in this really nice high resolution photography, but you can't see all of the features that are useful often for identification. So I pulled out one of these bees that I pinned in the field. And you can see that, you know, its head is kind of twisted, its legs are curled under. Uh, it's a cool looking specimen. This is a European honeybee, but this is not ideal for photography because a lot of the features that you might want to look at are tucked under the body or they are kind of skewampus a little bit here. So how do I make this bee ready for its big photo shoot? Well, what I do is I create a relaxing chamber. It's kind of just like a mini humidifier for specimens. So you can purchase fancy relaxing chambers or humidifiers. I just use these disposable Tupperwares. You can see I poked some small pinholes in the top, so there's a little bit of airflow. But basically all it is, it's a Tupperware with a piece of styrofoam in it and a paper towel at the bottom. At the bottom of this humidifying chamber, I use Windex. Uh, I have found that Windex reduces the mold growth uh, potential. If you just use water at the bottom of the humidifier, you can get mold growing on the bee specimens actually pretty rapidly. So, I just, so I'm just gonna moisten this paper towel with some Windex. That provides the moisture in our humidifying chamber. Then I just put the styrofoam on top. We don't want the bee directly in contact with the moisture. Then I take our bee specimen, set it in there, put the lid on, and wait a couple days. So this humidifying chamber, the, the moisture in the air will kind of soften up that bee's body uh, and you'll be able to move the legs and the antenna and the wings and position it how you want for photography. So just like on a cooking show, I have pre-prepared a different bee relaxing so we don't have to wait two days for this one to soften up. So if we pull this one out, so you can see, I can now move the legs without breaking them. I can move the abdomen. I can even move the antennae. So all the joints have softened up. And now it's time to kind of spread it out. So I use kind of this closed closed foam, I mean, closed cell foam. It's almost like a memory foam, but not quite that fancy. I just have it stuck on top of some normal styrofoam. Um, I just stick the bee all the way down in there. And you can see even just doing that has kind of spread it out pretty well. So I just take some extra pins and I try to be pretty gentle. And I'm gonna move the legs around to where I want them. 
back legs are kind of in place already. The front legs, I kind of need to get underneath the body to kind of pull them out. A lot of characteristics for identifying bees are on the legs. And so sometimes you need to be able to see these legs. Wings can also be important for identification. So the claws on these legs kind of hold on to this closed cell foam. If they don't, you can use a pin and kind of, you know, prop the knees up there. Another pin at the back, stuff like that. I also like to stick some pins up by the antennae so they're kind of sticking away from the face a little bit. Like that. So this one is actually missing one of its legs. This bee is missing this, this leg up in here, so I can't really do anything about that. You can see this is a pretty old worker that I collected last summer. See the, the wings and how tattered they are. You can kind of tell the age of a bee based on the wings. So that bee is now spread out, ready to dry. I'm just gonna leave it out here in Utah. The climate's really dry, so they dry pretty quickly. Tomorrow, this will mostly be fully dehydrated. And then it's ready for either photography or, or whatever you're gonna do next with it. So that's it, it's pretty easy. So we have the bee before I relaxed it and kind of spread it out for photography. And we have the bee after, after I have relaxed it and then spread out the, the legs and the body and the antennae. You can see it looks a lot better, uh, way better for things like a field guide, for example. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.